2002 Nissan Frontier with a 3.3 liter engine. Customer complaint is a check engine light. Take a quick second to introduce a new toy that I have and that is the Varus Edge. This is a scan tool that was bought by Rosedale Technical College. It's a scan tool I use in my class and uh, we are giving this thing a test run. You guys will see a lot more of my videos with the Edge and I'll comment on it along the way, let you guys know what I like, maybe what I don't like. One of the things I like so far is notice that I am wireless now with the connection to the car. No more personality keys, Snap One calls them to coordinate the communication of the car with the scan tool. So that's kind of cool. As you can see, we have three different fold codes in memory on this. What I was told coming to this garage is that I was going to do a evap leak test. So I brought my smoke machine. That was my main focus in coming was this evap large leak fault code that we have, which is a P0455. Now, as you can see, we have two other codes, this knock sensor bank one signal high P0338, and then a low O2 activity bank one sensor one P0134. So the main thing with this vehicle is they want to get an emission inspection and here in Pennsylvania, we need to make sure that there are no fault codes that are current and that the check engine light is off. So we're gonna have to address all three of these. And what I'm going to do is shoot three different videos. For this one, we're going to do the EVAP system leak for the rest of this video. The first thing I like to do when I'm dealing with an EVAP leak is I wanna see what type of bi-directional controls I have. Because what I, what I need to do is I need to close the vent solenoid. All of your EVAP systems have a normally open vent that we need to close. So let's try our actuator tests. And I'm hoping for vent control valve right here. I believe that's my EVAP vent. There's a vent control valve bypass valve as well. So it's probably going to be one of these two. And I'm guessing it's this one. I'm not totally sure in Nissan's terminology. We'll try the vent control valve here. Because I want to close it. Okay. I can hear it clicking in the back. I'll get you guys, a, I'll let you listen to that. All, all I'm doing is up top up here, I am clicking on and off. Let me turn that radio down too. All right, I got a little bit of assistance here. And I believe this is my, my vent solenoid right here. Um, go ahead and click on. Yep, I can feel it. And turn it off. Again, again, okay. So you guys can hear that it is clicking. It is functional. So we're gonna close this guy with the scan tool and we're gonna put smoke in it up front. Before this truck came in, the customer brought a vent solenoid and it looks like whoever told him he needs this was incorrect, but we'll see. I mean, just because it's clicking doesn't mean that it is sealing off like it should. The biggest thing with these is when they are energized, they need to be sealed. So the smoke is gonna help us with that. So I'm gonna close this valve underneath. We're gonna go up front, put smoke in the purge line. Okay, it's nice when they provide us with a service port. So I like that. If any of you guys don't have, and you're using a smoke machine and you don't have one of these, which will depress the Schrader inside, just remember that this valve, this Schrader valve in here is reverse thread. So you'll have to take the core out and then adapt the hose with the valve core out. Just remember it's reverse thread. but that is depressing the core. And then what we'll do with our smoke machine is 
and just go right into this line like that. Okay, we're gonna start our test. My preference in the display. I like to look at my flow rate, just personal preference. And what I wanna see, I wanna see this drop down to zero. If we have no leaks, that is. My expectations are with a large leak code that that flow is gonna stay high. So the way that this would work on this tool is as the EVAP system fills, the flow rate on this will drop and drop. So that's one way you can view it. Another one would be the leak size. I believe that's what that is. I can't see my LEDs here. Yeah, this is the leak size it's showing me. Again, my preference is looking at my flow rate, which is, I believe, liters per minute. That's pretty much staying there. That's not a good sign. It is time to go look for smoke, I believe. We got smoke everywhere. See where that's coming from. Lighting is everything when you're looking for leaks. Looks like it's coming out of that valve right there. I'm sure you guys can see better on the camera than I can. I'm actually looking at the camera lens. This solenoid back here is not the one that they I sold him. It. I can't tell, I'm trying to get it on the camera too. And I don't know if this shot's gonna show, but I can't tell if that's the line or the, um, or the, the solenoid, because the solenoids will get real rusty. Mm -hmm. All right, you see the smoke coming out of that? That is the solenoid itself. Let's see if that's a better view. Solenoid I believe this is our vacuum cut valve bypass valve is what this one is and that is our leak for sure no question about it you know this is one of those things without a smoke machine you're not going to find that so what we'll do um, is we will energize that solenoid with the scan tool just to see if it clicks and then I'll know the name of it. Um, that is not from a solenoid that's open. That is a leak for sure. Okay, so nice thing about my new uh, toy here is I am wireless, yeah. So I'm taking the scan tool. You guys, I'm gonna keep you focused up there. I just opened the vent and that was my vent control solenoid, the one that they gave us, the customer gave us. And the one I want to do now is the uh, vent control, this one on the bottom here. Let's see if that shows up. Shows up on the screen. That would be this one. The, the VC slash V bypass valve. That's vent control valve bypass valve. And all I'm doing here, guys, is I just want to hear it click. Just to know that that's the correct solenoid. So we can order the right part. Okay, I'm getting no clicking from this guy. I'm pretty sure that that is my, my bypass valve, my vacuum cut valve bypass valve, because let's see if this is in the shot. Um, on these Nissans, 
your vacuum cut valve is the is this piece right here this plastic piece and the bypass valve vacuum cut valve bypass valve is the solenoid that bypasses this guy so a goofy design and what they're doing exactly with it i'm not totally sure but uh that is my bypass valve not the vent solenoid um we got to do a little bit more checks here the electric part that i'm about to show you guys has nothing to do with the leak that you saw that leak that you saw was from rust this is what happens with these they just kind of rust apart and then they leak can't get it it's frozen on there you guys that live in the rust free area you have no idea how much of an advantage you have over us here in pa and in the rust belt look at this thing man like i can't can you can you see if you can get that i cannot get the connector off it will not come off it's just golden on there you already squeezed it? I did. I squeezed it and I tried prying up on it. If you can squeeze, I can push. Go ahead. I don't want to hurt you. That's ridiculous. Let me try again. Are you on it? Yeah. Oh, did I get you? Crazy. Can't you take it down and then? No, because it's, well, that unbolt the whole thing would be great, but there's nothing left of the bolts. <laughs> this is stupid. You pressing it? Tell me when. Crazy. Did it, did it come? Damn it. We push on the oh, sorry. We try pushing on the other side. Yeah. I can't reach it. Let me try over here. I can't get to it. Sometimes an ice hook, ice pick underneath the bottom, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is stupid, man. Why you shouldn't smoke. Right? Yeah. Seriously? Can you get straight up under there? Maybe. With what? With an ice pick. Like right here. I'll push that tab and I can lift up one. That's what that does, I'm like the tab in there, right? Can you see it in there? I can't really see if I'm in the right spot or not. It's like, that's ridiculous. What do you want to do? I need to take this thing down and out. The part. Mm -hmm. It's, okay. it's going to snap. You have a uh, 10 millimeter socket 
And yeah, a right qu quarter inch socket and ratchet. Yeah, it's right here. It's great. Hi, Paul. Hey, man. How are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm good. Here. I'm okay if I snap this. I need a shallow, Pete. We'll just wire tie it up. I need it. I need a, a shallow, shallow. shallow? Yeah. Flying solo today. Right now, yeah, everything's going. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna intentionally break the plastic part off of this yeah. beat. Yeah. Question for you. Yeah, I don't bother Yeah, don't bother me. <laughs> Could it be that the gas cap was broke? No, lean system is Oh, you got to go. Yeah, gas airflow sensor or something. I'm What's that? What kind of car? Lean system, Ford pickup truck. Um, dirty math, low fuel pressure, vacuum leak. One of those three. <sighs> Most likely a vacuum leak. But... Well, it's something we can look at for you, buddy. Yeah, I just I'm not in any hurry right now, and you're kind of you're kind of a little bit busy. A little bit. Are you I have two. Right huh? Are you videoing right I now? am. Am I bothering you? Uh, yeah. I'll probably be chopping this part anyway, because I'm getting right. my butt kicked. Good to see you. You too, man. Take it easy. We can we can fix you up. Yeah, I'm not in a hurry. I'm going to look at a new car. Wifey poo. So, it's broken. I'll see you later. Tell the family I said hello. Okay. All right, Keith. Come on, break. Thank you. Dude, I don't know if I got any of that on camera. Just in case I didn't get any of that on camera, this is the part that where the leak was. Um, the plastic piece sits over top of this and it seals it. And rust takes these crimped pieces and destroys them and then it lifts the, the back end of it and there's supposed to be a seal around here. So that's what happens is they basically rust off and I, was having all kinds of problems. I could not disconnect this electrical connection. So now that I have it down, maybe I can. I mean, it's like, I still can't. That's crazy. that just to get that unplugged there it is there's your bad solenoid just want to make sure electrically we're good here okay a tool that's fast becoming a favorite of mine for this kind of testing is my power probe um, in particular because of where I'm working underneath on this rusty vehicle I want to make sure I got a good power in the ground and I'm taking it with me. Um, kind of crazy. Check out my setup down here. <laughs> I 
got a little jumper for my power probe. So my tip voltage, okay. And I'll keep you focused here. I'm just going to, on the scan tool on this uh, vent control bypass valve, I'm just going to hit the on button, watch it. That's on right now. All right, you saw a voltage change. I like that. Uh, let's change our mode here. Okay, the drive test is supposed to uh, turn on some LEDs here. So that's the one I want to use. Eleven four. Alright, so basically uh, what this is doing is um, putting a small voltage as the solenoid would because I have it disconnected. So if I hit on, this should drop down low. And let's get rid of that beep. I hate the beep. Okay, turn it off. So what this is simu simulating for us Again, is the coil being intact. It's a ground side switch circuit. Turn this on, see it drop low, LED light comes on. This is a good driver. It's a good wire all the way back here. Battery voltage is a little bit weak, but that is okay. Uh, and this also tells me that my VC slash V bypass valve. I am on the correct valve. I could not hear it clicking because not only was it rotten and leaking, rotten being uh, rusted through, it was also electrically non-functional, just a bad solenoid. Uh, one more check is the feed voltage. Back to this for a second. This is just what a voltmeter would show you. And uh, you see how it's bouncing around on us right there? What that means is that's an open circuit. And then when I energize the computer, you see we have low voltage, about a half a volt. And uh, what that is, is a, a connected circuit. That's what that tells you. So that test in itself tells you the computer is fine. Um, pretty cool test. Uh, moving over now to the feed wire. And so we're clear, I am not spreading this terminal i'm actually going this pin's small enough not to worry about it but i'm going next to it here's my feed voltage this is showing me a good power feed again this is unloaded although we do have some amount of current to light the led it, it, it isn't much but um let's see i have to be careful i don't want to hit the switch for sure i blow the fuse but the modes that we have here, let's see. What does our, let me disconnect this just to be on the safe side. Let's go. I gotta get more familiar with my tool here. What's the feed test give me? Resistance. All right, worst thing that happens here is I is I blow the fuse. Yeah, I don't want to hit the switch. 4.4 .4 ohms on the feed wire. So it's doing some kind of calculation there. Putting some kind of a load on it. So battery voltage is 11.54 and the voltage that we have on the tip is 11.49. So they're doing a little bit of math on a voltage drop. I see, I don't know what kind of current this is putting on it on this feed test. Uh, but anyway, I'm comfortable with the feed. Some of you guys can chime in here on the feed test that I'm doing and how accurate it is and what this calculation is. How much current is it actually putting on the feed of this circuit, I would like to know. But anyway, that's it for the EVAP part. Bad vacuum cut valve bypass valve.